After having established that the TM program works um, from the research and previous research, we want to make some policy recommendations. And for this, we have been looking into, let's say, what can we recommend in terms of deepening the practice or widening the practice? And to whom should we make those policy recommendations? Let us first look to the different levels, so to, to whom we would like to make the policy recommendations. And this really goes from the school up to the European level. So you have the school, you have above the school, you have the local educational authorities, municipalities, umbrella organizations, uh, could be parent organizations, uh, above that, you, you have regional organizations, national organizations, and then the European level, where we have especially the European Commission with the Erasmus program. Looking at the deepening dimension, so deepening or strengthening, it actually means that we want to grow stronger trees, stronger roots, how can we strengthen it? For example, how can we make the practice more regular? How can we involve more students in the school, more teachers, more parents in the school, such that it, it gets more established? The widening dimension means actually that we are expanding what we have established so far to other areas like for instance uh, geographically that we would go into other countries or in a, in a single country in other regions but it could also be an expansion into other sectors like the health sector or the prisons where we can see expansions or even in education itself where we can look into education specifically for adult education, for migrants, for sports, and so on. So this is the widening aspect of the recommendations. And those are the three dimensions that we have been looking at when actually uh, developing the recommendations. Now, we formulated uh, 10 recommendations organized in uh, a recommendation mandala, so to speak. And at the very core of the recommendations, we have put uh, well-being. So the well-being of students, teachers and staff. So the well-being is actually improved thanks to the self-balancing technique that uh, TM, the TM program is bringing. And we are actually focusing or using well-being and inclusive education as a stepping stone because around well-being and inclusive education it, it is naturally now that you can create momentum in society and certainly currently it's a hot topic for the ministries of education what i would like to look at now is how does well-being then relate to social in inclusion and inclusive education. And we see that already some years ago, the UN Committee on the Rights of Persons and with Disabilities included well-being as part of inclusive education and social inclusion. Also, the European Commission is very clear on that. Social inclusion should include well-being. We have also this report of the World Bank Group, and there are also scientific articles, such as from Sen and from Boucher, that are saying social inclusion simultaneously incorporates multiple dimensions of well-being. So this, this is very clearly established. Now, if we are looking at the well-being model, and this is uh, the well-being model of Dodge, and so what he's saying, it's, it's a well recognized, and what he's saying is that well-being is actually an equilibrium. And the equilibrium is between the challenges or the problems that you have, like psychological, social or physical, 
and the resources that you have, the psychological, social and physical resources. And uh, typically for uh, TM, we, we see that there is uh, substantial evidence that it can have effects indeed on the physical, on the psychological, or we would rather call it mental, or on the social dimension, that it works on that very well. And this is actually also related to the radicalization, where the, the lack of social integration, like for instance discrimination and, and, and racism, are motivational factors that contribute to radicalization. There, there are always motivational factors to radicalization and they can typically be found in the, the challenges that we see, the well-being challenges that are not met with resources. So as a resource we bring transcendental meditation and in that way um, this is the, the mechanism how radicalization can be prevented in schools. Let's now go to the different recommendations itself. The recommendation here is to promote well-being as an objective. And we are actually looking in this as a recommendation to the regional, national level and the Commission. So, promoting well-being as an objective for instance, if we take the, the European Commission, they are saying, well, we should have education as a primary objective for education, looking at the economic growth or the, uh, the shrinking workforce. So what we are recommending is that well-being should be included into the key objectives of the Euro European Commission as well. A third recommendation is make the practice a daily routine. And if we compare it, for instance, with fitness, of course, uh, fitness, certain exercises can be easily learned. However, you need to, to keep up the practice to, to keep fit. And the same thing is true for transcendental meditation. If you want to keep the, the results, then, of course, you, you need to, to be regular in your practice. And as uh, Raymond was showing, we, we actually have seen that very clearly, that the frequency of uh, meditation has an influence on the benefits that, that you reap. So basically what we are saying here is that uh, as quickly as possible, one should try to institutionalize the practice in the school. And it means it should be a daily routine followed by everyone. A fourth recommendation is to provide curricular flexibility. And flexibility to the curriculum is different in different countries. For instance, in the Nordic countries, they have much more flexibility in the curriculum than in the southern countries. And, but also in the southern countries, it is possible to get certain exceptions and or certain ways that you can indeed embed TM in the curriculum. And typically, the, all the recommendations here, or most of the recommendations that, that we present here, have been not taken from thin air, but we have actually uh, demonstrated that they, they are actually working. We have demonstrated that in the project. For instance, this one we have uh, seen in Portugal, where they have in 130 school clusters, they have actually provided the possibility to embed new approaches, new practices in the curriculum. So our recommendations, they are grounded, most of them in, in actual practice that we have seen. The fifth recommendation is to use a good implementation framework. And what is important here is that we have not a cookbook approach, but there is a, a roadmap. We relate already to the 17 steps from CBE. This recommendation is not only for schools, but also at higher uh, levels, regional, national levels. 
where we have actually also the, the possibility or what we should do is use there also a certain implementation framework for introducing new policies. The parents' organizations, involving them means that you are involving one of the most important stakeholders which can make a difference. And they inspire other parents' organizations and of course parent organizations, parents move from one level to another level of school. We also succeeded in involving teacher training centers and uh, so involving teachers, training centers can be important as part of teacher training, initial teacher training or continuous professional development. In the project we were able to actually also get credits for continuous professional development which means that uh, teachers that are following these courses get credits for their continuous professional development. Something that we have been looking at is, is appointing TM teachers in every school, and which means that school teachers can become TM teachers or that there would be dedicated TM teachers like you have now mathematics teachers or arts teachers that there would also be a TM teacher. The ninth recommendation is about providing instruments to improve implementation and here we are especially looking into networking and community building of principals, teachers, sharing experiences in schools but also at policy making levels. So sharing experience for instance that one is saying well in this school we, we had a fantastic evaluation and uh, like for instance the school in Skelmersdale, that that is shared. And we have uh, also proposed here a European expert centre for schools for introducing TM into schools. The last recommendation is about creating demand and facilitate solid research. So there we are looking in on the one hand awareness raising measures and what we are suggesting is that uh, governments, regional, at a European level, national, would include well-being projects into their calls. We have also seen that research is, is quite, uh, it's very hard. And also what we are, uh, we have made specific suggestions how we can increase the efficiency and effectiveness of research. So this is an overview of the 10 recommendations that we made in the project. Thank you very much.